No, 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 200% and going strong. So if the overhaul, so if the factory says you should overhaul your engine, do you know what yours is? It's, it's not, it's like 1,200 hours? 15. Okay, so I think he's running the same engines in his uh, 310 as Harry runs in his. It's uh, 0470s or IO 470s. No, so, 50, so the factory says you should overhaul your engines at every 1,500 hours or 12 years, whichever is first. He's saying... Hey, I'm not at 15. I've just passed 3,000 hours, and they're running great. With, with, with going strong. Now, I, I will say this, you know, having been in the in the aircraft industry, for a bottom end, you guys know what the bottom end is, right? It's the the case and the crank and the cam and stuff like that. Especially a Continental, I'm not overly surprised that he would say he's got 3,000 hours on it. If you treat an engine well oil changes, uh, pay attention, good leaning practices, not dumping a bunch of lead. Um, there, I don't see a reason why a bottom end won't hit those numbers. It's the top end that I'm very skeptical of. And I think if we actually watched what, and I've read some stuff, you're, you're going to get valve problems here and there. It's just going to happen. So it's not like they put the engine together, boom, he's got 3,000 hours of, of, of pain-free, maintenance-free flying, uh, just some oil changes. I'd be willing to bet there's several... Uh, valve changes here and there just because the nature of the beast they burn valves and that's not his fault or uh, and so he's probably had some valve guides and valves changed out from here and there that's to be expected but it's a lot cheaper to change out a valve and a guy than it is to overhaul an engine so all right uh, let's see so we've got uh, all that oil falls off does not suspend the lead well and I think that's all I have to say about about that kind of stuff let's talk about some special oils special so that all came at a very good time, special oils. Well, Lycoming, Lycoming has the camshaft up high. And, well, actually, this all started, if I want to think about it. Um, Lycoming experimented with this engine. And forgive, forgive me for, for the term, but this is the industry term that was just given to it. That bastard engine. Now, if you're in aviation, I saw they know you know exactly what I'm talking about, but you guys don't. It was the Lycoming 0320 H2 AD, and everybody says, "Why would you make a product that has AD right in the in the words?" So what they did is, and this went in uh, a, a run of Cessna 172s, and also they used it in some twins with the. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, it was. You had the H2 AD, the bastard. Okay, first mistake was they named it H2AD, right? Because that stands for... It was, sorry. The second mistake they did is they painted it baby blue, and it was ugly, right? I don't know. Light combing has a beautiful dark gray color. This one was baby blue. It was hideous. So what they did is, is you guys are not familiar, you've got your two crank cases and what goes on the back. Accessory case, so it was three pieces. They made it in one piece. Oh, God. I have half of one. I could bring it out and show you. And so it was a very it was a very lightweight case. So first of all, it was lightweight, and then they tried to use it was like they used automotive parts. So they used automotive tappets. Um, it's Continental does too, but they didn't have big tappet heads. You could actually just pull them right out of the case because they didn't have a they weren't the mushroom style. They were just straight. And then the rocker arms were if you've ever built a car engine, they look like they're stamped out of metal. They're not oh. what we have, oh, which are which are cast or forged. They're just stamped. They use those, right? So they had all of these problems with it. And so, um, I'm going way back. So the first thing you had to do was this T mod and T stood for tap it. You had to take the engine apart and have all the, the uh, tap it bores bored over size and put in larger tappets. You know, the, the, that was the, uh, the T mod. The problem is these things were eating camshafts left and right. So, and that's where you also see in your light cone, your Lycoming Service Bulletin uh, 240 mandatory replacement items. It says rocker arms and fulcrums on 0320 H, H series and the, and the uh, 360E series, the same design. So, because they're just stamped and the fulcrums weren't, they're just bolted on. It's just a stud coming up and you bolted a fulcrum to that. So, anyway, but so because of this problem, Lycoming came out with this additive. So, they have an additive, and they, they, they gave it a really cool name called LW16702. Uh, 
or better known by me as that LW additive. Because <laughs> as much as I remember part numbers, remember, I never remember that XC702, that LW additive. All right, um, it is an anti-scuff, anti-scuff, anti-wear, not underwear, but anti-wear, uh, additive. <laughs> Additive um, approved approved for use. Lycoming wants you to use it. Approved for use. I'll put dare I say and recommended. Is that anti scuff? Yeah, anti S C U F F. Uh yeah, I think it is actually. And recommended. Approved for use and recommended. Um, I'm adding some stuff in here. For all lycomings, for all engines except for engines that, I'll write this right, um, have a, uh, I don't want to make it too wordy. Um, it's engine, you can't use it on an engine that uses the engine oil with a clutch, like a helicopter. So, except for engines that have a uh, clutch, clutch, um, that use engine oil, that use engine oil. Should have wrote it like this. All Lycoming piston aircraft engines except for installations that utilize a friction type clutch and a common engine oil system for the transmission and clutch assembly is what I wrote. I tried to make it shorter. So, so in other words, and that's going to be helicopters. So a helicopter has a clutch. A clutch is something that has to grab and the stuff works so dang well that the clutches wouldn't grab and so they would spin against each other and you wouldn't get the drive motion going to the transmission and then the rotor blade. So that would be bad. So that's how well it worked. So this stuff was actually... Um, let me see. I'm on history. So the LW16702 um, was developed or, or first used or developed for the H2AD engine, 0320 H2ADs with the funny rocker shafts and all that stuff. And so they're trying to, to, to make this engine better and uh, there's a lot more that went on with this engine the funny thing is if you talk to Lycoming now that when I went to Lycoming school years ago the guy made a comment that be, it was such a problematic engine and they've invested so much time fixing it that at this point now they consider it one of its better, better engines so they've, they've had a lot of growing pains with it but it's actually according to them not about, I wouldn't want one they're just different I don't like different different is bad <laughs> All right, so what they what you were supposed to do is let's go to the right slide. There it is. I see it. There we had to go around the right. Okay, so you're supposed to use this LW sixteen seven that LW additive. I got to fix this slide. That's not it. Please stand by. Nobody can see that because of where it is. Good enough. All right. Um, so you're supposed to use this uh, LW16702. That's just what it is. And you had to use it with the H2ADs. You had to. Uh, but people were finding out that this stuff actually works so well and they're using so much of it that Aeroshell decided that, hey, wouldn't it be a good idea if we just put it in our oil? So we have Aeroshell W100 plus. Guess what the plus is? <laughs> it has a 16702 in it. Um, Phillips came out with their version and they call it the Victory 100 AW. I can't see that well. Oh, that works. All right, I don't use the Victory. Um, 100 AW, ashless dispersant. Dispersant sans, oh, that's Spanish, I didn't read that. All right, so 
the, one, the 100 AW contains a 16702 additive. Does it say do not take any permanent? Yeah. <laughs> not a good human additive? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? Oh, right there, there. internally. It makes the poop come out easy. It does. <laughs> I don't think it cleans all the right. time. Make it slip right out. Oh. All right, so. Where are we here? I think I'm on three, so. No, yes, yes I am. Okay, so I said the. The 160702 was originally used on that. So aeroshell, aeroshell, W80 plus and W100 plus and, and 15W50, actually it's W15, which is the aeroshell semi-synthetics use oh and and the Phillips uh, victory I think it is victory I don't know victory 100 victory 100 a w oh guess what a w stands for anti where victory 100 use the lw 16702 Lycoming? Yeah. It was not only approved, I think it's mandatory in the H two eighty engines. Well no, but besides that engine, they you could run it in all the rest of their engines. Oh absolutely. I, I think they recommend it in their okay. service instruction. They want you to. I have to read it. All right. Uh, we should also mention this because this is becoming more common. Light sport. Light sport aircraft. Do I have any light sport pictures? I don't have a picture of a light sport. No, oh, greases? Good grief. I really went crazy on that one. All right. But what's a light sport? A aircraft that's defined as weight, but they're a uh, certain weight. I don't know. <coughs> certain weight, certain uh, speed. So it's got to be under a certain weight, under a certain speed. Is there, there's not a fuel limitation on that, I don't think, is there? No, there is for ultralights. Ultralights have, I think, a five-gallon max, but that's just lawn furniture that flies. So, well, what's an example of a light sport? RV. So a lot of aircraft that actually are certified, type certificated aircraft are actually called light sport, like um, Piper Cubs. Piper Sport. Uh, what, which, what's another Piper one? Piper has a light sport. Well, Piper has a light sport, but some of the old ones are so light and so low horsepower, they, they manage to get in there. <laughs> So anyway, light sport. But a lot of these things are running Rotax engines. So two-stroke, four-stroke. So they came out with a special oil for those. So we see so we have the Aeroshell, Aeroshell Sport Plus. Sport Plus Two. And the Aeroshell Sport Plus four. Well, three. <laughs> well, care to guess what the two and the four are for? You didn't say number of cylinders, did you? No, two stroke versus four stroke. Look at that. Two stroke. And this is four stroke. So if you get a light sport coming in, you're like, oh, should we use Aeroshell 100? Oh, I know. Let's use this stuff. Well, what's wrong with just using car oil then if a Rotax or, or ro where, where, where do you see Rotaxes out there besides aircraft? Snowmobiles. Snowmobiles and jet, jet, jet skis. skis. What else? Quads. Boats and what? Quads. Quads. Okay. Why don't you just use that oil? <coughs> Remember the fuel difference. Yeah, what do your snowmobiles, jet skis, everything else run off of? No lead. No lead. What, do we, what happens when you go to the airport and fill up? Lead. Lots of lead. <laughs> We're talking about that next eight weeks. They call it low lead. That's not low. It's only low compared to what it used to be. <laughs> it's something like four times the amount of lead that car gas ever had. <laughs> wow. So uh, we call it low lead. 
Don't worry about it, Varma. It's just low lead. It's, just, that's what it's, it's so low, we can call it. It's right in the name. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, that's, that's it's coming, but I'll tell you, it's all about detonation properties. So the lead, because uh, we, we use 100 octane. Now, best you can get at the gas stations, 97. <laughs> the, the Ron divided by Mon times two method, by the way. You're going to laugh, but eventually you're going to know what that means. You're like, oh, it's right there on the thing. I know what that means. So, um, anyway, so yeah, so it's all about detonation, and that's how, how they do it. Uh, let's see. So, what can I say about this? Um, both oils, both oils were developed. Were developed for engines, for aircraft engine. These engines due to use, due to use of 100 LL. What's 100 LL? Low lead. 100 low lead fuel. Uh, we do have diesel engines out there now. Compression ignition. And they use the Aero shell. <laughs> Diesel 10W40, full synthetic. How about that? Full synthetic. Full synthetic and diesel ultra. And diesel. Diesel ultra. Well, okay, now wait a minute then why are the diesel engines suddenly using the full synthetic? Now they're not having a problem. What's the difference? What was the problem with the synthetic to begin with? It's slippery, it's not too slippery. Not too slippery. No, it, it combusted. Uh, it, it, it didn't encapsulate. No, it didn't uh, encapsulate the uh, particle. Well, and what was the particle? Lead. 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 All right. Where'd the lead come from? Yes. The fuel. Got a diesel engine. What kind of fuel does a diesel engine run? 100 low lead? No. What does it run? Diesel. Jet A. So in, in, in aviation, it's just Jet A. So we call it diesel, but it uses Jet A. How much lead is in Jet A? Zero. Zero. So we can remove the lead, we go to synthetic. So. So I may get this slightly wrong, but um, so I won't write it down for you if I do. But one of the first manufacturers of aircraft diesel engines was a company called Thielert. And they, they, they were out of, out of Germany. It's just a German engine. And where do you suppose a company who wants to make a diesel engine in Germany is going to go to to get their base diesel engine? Oh, that was a good guess. Yeah, I guess I didn't think of that one. No. Dodge. <laughs> think, well, Dodge used Cummins, but was Dodge Chrysler Fiat. We could have said Mercedes. So I believe, and we did have at one point a, a student who was a diesel expert, and he took a look at our Thieler uh, diesel engine, and he said, man, this is Mercedes A-Class all the way, which is before the A here, but anyway, he said it's a diesel. So they use a Mercedes diesel, so, which ran on synthetic anyway. Um, but anyway, so Thieler went bankrupt or was bought out by Continental Motors. Whoa. Hmm. So. Didn't they try to do something with Cessna to get a diesel Skylane or something? Uh, yeah, they did, but it didn't work out or something. Yeah. All right, so selection of oils. E-C-T-I-O, selection of oils. Now that you know all about oils, or enough that you wish you didn't, yeah. you gotta select some oil. All right, all aircraft oil. All aircraft oil should conform. Maybe I should put must. To M I L L. 608. What does mil mean? Mil spec. mil spec. And that is for straight mineral. Straight mineral. Or M I L L 
22851. You know I'm going to have that number on the test, right? Um, AD oil. It's question number one on the test. What is MIL 6082 certified for? You know I would never ask you that. So we have that mill spec for straight mineral and uh, this mill spec for AD oil. Why would I bother to tell you this? Well, because I tell you all kinds of crap you don't need to know. But I try not to. You know, I don't like busy work. Always, something always leads to something. Uh, this means, this means, what do you think it means? It's an FAA question. No, come on, in reality. Let's think practically. Oh, you'll see those on the container. Traceability. You see it on the, okay, you see it on the container. So I'm out flying around. I leave from here and I decide I want to go on vacation. So I fly down to Bakersfield because it's the vacation capital of the world. <laughs> How about I go down to Harris Ranch and get myself a nice burger. You guys familiar with Harris Ranch? Yeah. You know, you got to go to Harris. I, I should get paid for this advertisement, sir. So <laughs> you go down, if you're going down to LA and you take I-5, if you're going down and, and if you're going to LA, it's from the left-hand side, there's Harris Ranch. And you see the Harris Ranch trucks? It yeah. smells terrible around there. No, Lots of fun. Is that place that smells like cow butt? That's it. No, that, that is uh, Cattleman City. Um, but it's very close to it. It's where the cows are. So Harris Ranch has this great beef. They are famous for their beef, and they have the restaurant there, but there's also the, the don't go to the restaurant, but you go in, and there's like a gas station right there, and I think it's some Tesla charging stations, and you go in there, and you get the tri-tip sandwich. Oh, my gosh, it is so good because it's that beef. Gas station, gas station yeah, because they have a Harris Ranch counter inside there oh, and it's quick service and and oh man the oh the chili i was like unbelievable but anyway so uh but they have an airport right there so i go down to harris ranch and i get there and i'm pre-flighting on the way back and not only does my headlight not work which is my headlight and my taxi light doesn't work but i'm low on oil so i walk into the harris ranch and i'm like hey i need some oil can you can you hook me up and they say what do you need and i said well i'm using phillips xc 2050 and they say, whoo, yeah, we've got some Aeroshell W100 and some W100 Plus. What would you like to do? What am I going to do? Some oil is better than no oil. Huh? Some oil is better than no oil. Than my 20 some thousand dollar engine? Oh. <laughs> you, get, you get Harry's 182 in there. Oh, that price just went way up. <laughs> what you got there, Harry, again? A U or an L? A U. U. <laughs> Uh, 41213 Now, granted, that's only $478 a month. <laughs> so, is some oil better than none? Let me tell you right now, if I got a $40,000 engine in the front and I'm cord at load, I will find a Motel 6 and, and have it Amazon in the next day or something. You don't, you don't just carry a cord with you? Of course I do, but I forgot. <laughs> or my partner used the airplane and he used the court and threw the empty in the back and I didn't bother to weigh it and see that it was an empty court. So what am I going to do? Just okay, he wants to just pour in the hundred. You're willing to risk it. His dad's rich, he doesn't care. <laughs> what? No, go, go ahead. Set. So, what did you say? I think it's all right to mix it. Why do you think it's all right to mix it? Conforms to the same number. Yeah. yeah. Don't be afraid. He's right. <laughs> it conforms to the same mill spec. I have nothing to worry about. It's all interchangeable. There's not a problem. So, because it conforms to the same mill spec, you can intermix. They're all designed that way. Uh, the things that you don't think about, which, which can be kind of overwhelming, is uh, like when I went to Lycoming School, one of the guys in the group worked for, I think it was Shell, but he worked on the gas side of things. And it's like he'd never actually seen an aircraft engine, so he came to learn about this like well, actually, I take that back. They had a Lycoming engine at, at Shell. I was, I was pretty sure it was Shell. And he wanted to come learn about this Lycoming engine they had at Shell. Well, what this engine was is it was a test bed for their fuels. And I actually read further about it or saw it somewhere, and it's... Um, I think they have two different carburation systems on it so they can switch back and forth from one to the other and test it and all that. But anyway, we wanted to know about the engine. So we had lunch and he was talking about what, what's he working on. And he was working on a, a no lead air, aircraft fuel. And you say, think, well, we're doing that in cars. How hard could it be? The fuel that, he is, that they're developing, 
has to be 100% compatible with any conceivable product that pilots will stick in their tank. So it can't just be this fantastic, hey, we did it, here's the product, it works perfect. You have to take the product and then mix it with an infinite amount and variables of 100 low lead, of different car gases, of whatever else, Marvel Mystery Oil. Everything has to be tested to make sure that their fuel is 100% compatible with everything else <clears throat> under the sun that anybody can conceivably <laughs> stick in a fuel tank. Like, wow. <laughs> so it's not just enough to develop it. You got to take okay. the idiot factor into it. That, that sounds impossible, though. I know. I, because what are because you getting, you're getting five gallons from every airport in the United States? That's what, no. Well, 100 low lead 100 low lead. Yeah, but what refinery is it coming from? There's got to be a difference from... Nah, that's not going to change like that. But think about, okay, then they have to think about, okay, California has a summer blend and a winter blend. So our blends in car gas are different than, I don't know, Nevada's or Oregon's. And so they do have to get all of those different blends of car gas because people put car gas in their airplanes. And if they were to develop a purely uh, um, aviation type fuel, stick it in an aircraft and say, this fuel is totally compatible with 100 low lead. You can mix them, you can match them, it's gonna be fine. So if you go somewhere and you have half a tank 100 low lead, top off with the unleaded, you're gonna be fine. Nope, you gotta figure, well maybe somebody put some Mystery. winter blend in and some Marvel Mystery Oil. So anyway, but where I was going, so this means, so at the mill spec, this means something. This means that it is acceptable. It means it is acceptable. It acceptable. Um, let me see. Uh, where was I? I don't even know. Well, it's acceptable to mix them. That's what I'm going to write. And this is for the oil, right? Just not for where do they go? Oh, way down here. I missed. Oh, I missed that part. Oh, that's why. I'm like, oh, I did that. This means acceptable to mix oil brands and types. It is acceptable to mix oil brands and types. The key word here is going to be acceptable. It is not recommended. I put here, although it is not recommended. But I don't know who doesn't recommend it, although it is not recommended. I think that's a light combing service instruction. It says it's acceptable, but not recommended. Um, I, had, I had a section additives that I forgot to put in here, but we actually talked about it quite well. The only thing I wrote for additives is do not use unapproved additives in aviation. And then I wrote, if additives work, then why doesn't the oil company just add them? Makes sense, right? So if we take, yeah, why didn't they just add them? Um, one type of additive was just lightweight oil. I like that. Um, okay, so if we take that theory, if, if the additives work, why doesn't the oil company just add them? What additive did they add? The LW. The LW. The LW. That LW additive, that's exactly it. So, hey, maybe that it must work. Um, all right, so section of oils, okay. During break-in, all right, so we'll do this, during break-in. During break, break in. Uh, let's see. During break in, we got to get official here. TCM, which is no longer called TCM, and Lycoming. And do you know how they pronounce Lycoming when you go back there? Lycoming. Lycoming. Huh? It's better than Lycoming. Huh? Lycoming. <laughs> uh, let's see. TCM and Lycoming both recommend. Both recommend. Both recommend what? You know this. Yep, straight. Okay, we don't actually call it straight mineral, but I keep writing it. Even my notes don't have it. I just straight. We just call it mineral oil. We call it mineral oil and ashless dispersant. That's really that's the way we say it out in the field. But uh, just to be technical, it's straight mineral versus ashless dispersant. Because if you wanted to be technical, and I said, hey, I'm putting mineral oil, am I running mineral oil in my, my airplane? No. Phillips XC 2050? That is mineral oil, but it's, it's AD, not straight. So, uh, okay, where am I at? Um, but, but, straight mineral oil for break in, um, but. Not for what? Lycoming. 
by Kerming Turbos. So is Bill right for Continental? That is correct. Um, well, this is almost outdated. Well, it's outdated because ECI doesn't exist anymore. ECI and several several engine overhaul shops. And I did look around on the web what people recommended. And there was a lot of overhaul shops out there. Um, overhaul shops disagree with this and recommend and recommend I'm just gonna say AD oil and I already told you ECI said uh, Phillips XC hey, Kevin. hey what For, uh, a company like ECI or an engine overhaul shop to disagree with the manufacturer do they have to have data to support that disagreement no nope. Nope. Um, I'll continue this tomorrow, but I'll just tell you, and I'll write this tomorrow. But the theory being that AD oil is too slippery for ring break-in, but this theory has been proven false. Simply stated, straight mineral oil is not a good oil and simply accelerates wear. But I go on to say that consult your service bulletin, and the oil that you're going to use is whoever's paying for the warranty. 